Ladies and gentlemen, you are tuned into another episode of the Paul Leslie Hour. And now your host, Paul Leslie. Good evening, Little Flock Music. Hey, it's me. Hey, how are you? I'm doing good. Doing good. good. This is T.L. This is T.L. talking to P.L. <laughs> At long last. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for talking to me. Well, thank you so much for the invitation. I feel honored. I feel honored. Well, I want to tell all the listeners out there about a really special man named Bruce Birch, and he's a hit songwriter. And before I introduce this woman, I just wanted to thank Bruce for his contribution to the show. And for anyone who wishes to do that, they can go to thepaulleslie.com. And the woman that I'm talking to, I called her T.L. Those are her initials. Her name is Terry Letterer, and she has been working with an independent record label, a very unique label, Little Flock Music. Little Flock Music was founded by singer-songwriter Peter Mayer, and some of the artists that can be found on the roster include Peter Mayer, Scott Kirby, Roger Guth, Brendan Mayer, Eric Darkin, Vincent Varvel, the Mass Acoustics, and others. So, Terry Letterer, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm so excited to talk with you. (laughs) Well, I'm honored to talk to you. So, tell us, what is your official title with Little Flock? My, My official title, what my business card reads, is Artist and Product Services Manager. Artist Services and Product Manager. And... You are the woman who keeps the wheels rolling. Well, I don't know (laughs) about that. (laughs) But I do have lots of product here at the distribution center, and I do answer a lot of emails and phone calls about people wanting merchandise and among other things. Well, Mike Davis said about Terry Letterer, she is one of the most organized and hardworking people that I know. So, oh, he's you so sh- kind. You should know I love that. Mike. How did you get involved with Little Flock? Well, I knew of Peter's Tune India from the Margaritaville Cafe late night menu compilation CD. Uh huh. That was way, way back. One of my husband's clients at the time was the Hard Rock Cafe in Washington, D.C. And we learned that Peter was going to play there with his band at the Cinco de Mayo party in 1997. So Chuck and I went to the show. We got a chance to meet Peter and hear more of his original music for the first time that night. And we purchased his latest CD, which was Green Eyed Radio at the time, and became instant fans. Soon after, there was an interactive message board on Peter's website. And I became friends with Sue McCaughey from Pennsylvania and Gary Shotroff from the Baltimore area, and we formed the Peter Mayer Fan Club. And we spent many years traveling around together and promoting Peter and the band, beginning with the Romeo's Garage CD release parties. So if you fast forward two years... Peter called me one day, and he asked me if I would be interested in working for Little Flock Music, and of course I was excited to accept the position. I was originally hired to handle merchandise sales, and back then we had a toll-free phone line, 877-LIT-FLOCK, so customers would call, and I would take their credit card orders over the phone and then mail their CDs, and because People had to call in for their orders. It gave me the opportunity to talk to a lot of folks who have mutual respect for the artists that we represent and the love of music. Then several years later, fast forward again, we developed an online shopping cart on Peter's website. And now, of course, we have the Little Flock Music web store that's full of CDs, LPs, T-shirts, hats, all kinds of fun stuff. And That's my little plug to invite your listeners to shop at (laughs) littleflockmusic.com. 
<laughs> While I still manage the merchandise and fulfill orders, my job has grown over the past 20 years to include managing the CD Baby and Amazon accounts, preparing the artist monthly spreadsheets, accounting of their online and live show sales each month. I also update Peter, Brendan, and Scott Kirby's websites with their upcoming shows, ticket information, and I get a lot of emails. So when I answer their inquiries, I make sure they get in the proper hands, like somebody might have a question regarding licensing, which, you know, I would forward to Mike, or booking, which I would forward to Beth Estes, song submissions, requests to use a song in a church service, merchandise, all kinds of things. And I also assist in sharing promotional information via the Little Flock social media outlets, update the email list with new customers, subscribers, and publishing newsletters. And also, when there's a new project released by Peter or Scott Kirby, I assist with editing their CD liner notes and do their fact-checking. And I was also very privileged to help with the editing of Peter and Phyllis London's A Junk Man's Christmas Eve book. So there you have it, in a nutshell. <laughs> This is a lot of work, and I can say anybody who does anything behind the scenes, sometimes they don't realize how simple something like editing a photo can be. So hats off. Oh, well, thank Well, I love my job. It's It's <laughs> very enjoyable. Now, did you ever see yourself working at a record label? Was that anything that you thought you would one day do? Not at all. My degree is in legal assistance, and I worked in several law firms after college until I became a stay-at-home mom. And then uh, later, when my daughters entered elementary school, I was offered a job as a part-time instructional assistant at their school. And so I worked there while they went to school there. And then when our youngest graduated from the school, I also left the job at that time. And that's when I was given the opportunity to work for Little Flock. Interesting. I should tell you, I was a legal assistant at one point. Really? Yes, I was. One of my favorite days, one of my all-time favorite days, was when they told me that the firm is running out of money and you're laid off. I was so <laughs> happy. <laughs> I've never admitted that, but there you go. It was interesting work. I really enjoyed patent law. That was my favorite. I started out working for a domestic relations lawyer, so it was a lot of divorce and child custody and then moved on to patent law, and that was really cool. I got to meet with inventors from all over the world. Interesting. Would you say that Little Flock Music, the record label, is unique in the world of record labels? Mm. You know, that's a really great question, Paul. Something that I often wonder about myself, because this is the only record label I've ever worked for. I don't know the inner workings of the others. But I will tell you that the team that Peter has assembled here is more like a family. We all count on each other regularly. As you know and your listeners probably know, the band is extremely talented, and they're all wonderful, down-to-earth people. But so are the people that I work with behind the scenes, uh, mostly Mike Davis, the general manager, and C.J. Sutherland, who is the webmaster and creative genius. Being that we're all in different states, we've been relying on video meetings and emails to kind of plan and promote the latest batch of online concert events and fundraisers because the guys can't be out performing live. So it's it's a really fun team to work with behind the scenes. What would you say motivates you in your work with the label? Uh, goodness. Probably positive feedback from my coworkers and the customers. Their emails and calls keep me motivated I really enjoy doing the newsletter. Uh, preparing the newsletters for Peter and Scott helps me 
to get the news and information out to their friends, subscribers, their fan bases. That's probably my favorite task, seeing it from the first draft to the end result. It's great to share exciting news about upcoming projects, live performances, new merchandise. Also, I think fulfilling the the online orders is really cool because I know that the people they're getting, the recipients are going to get some really fun mail in the next few days. Absolutely. So, as I mentioned at the beginning, the primary artist when we think of Little Flock, we think of Peter Mayer, the mm-hmm. founder. As best as you can tell, because I should add, nobody in the history of this show has been a guest more than Peter Mayer. What would you say motivates him? Wow. Well, Peter is a family man, first and foremost. We know that he's played with his brother Jim for a lifetime. And now Brendan co-writes and performs with him. But Peter's beautiful wife and daughter have also co-written with him and sang on some of his recordings. I know that he wants to make the world a better place for his family, his friends, all of his supporters, through his music and his very positive messages. He's one of those people. He writes incredible songs. He has a beautiful ability to sing. He's a great guitarist. He is creative in so many different ways. What would you say Peter Mayer's greatest talent is? Well, aside from everything you just mentioned, being an incredibly gifted musician, he's an absolutely wonderful, insightful, and thoughtful person. He takes the time to listen to everyone he has a chance to meet, whether it's a celebrity or a new fan who has seen one of his shows for the first time. He looks for the best in every person and situation and tries to pass that on. Now, his son, Brendan Mayer, is on the label, as you were mentioning earlier. I think it's very unique to have a father and son on the same record label. What has that been like for you to see him debuting as a recording artist? Oh, my goodness. I think Brendan was nine years old when we first visited the Mayer family in St. Louis for the first time. And I remember Brendan was always a very, very shy kid. And it has been just so wonderful to watch him blossom into such an amazing artist. I mean, every time I see him perform, I take him aside and I say, just when we think you can't get any better, you blow us away with your music. So he's Definitely, he's a rising star for sure. As you mentioned, you compile the Morning Star newsletter, the Peter Mayer Fan Club newsletter. Mm -hmm. I can recall when it was a paper version. Yes. How did the newsletter come to be established? Well, back in those fan club days, we would collect articles from all the members. We were always excited to read what Peter's feature story would be, which Peter always wrote a feature story. And then as a group, we would come up with some side stories and photos to share. We would email articles back and forth and edit them, and then we would send it off to a graphic artist who would kind of put it together and then print it. And then Sue, Gary, and I and our spouses would meet like on a weekend, and we would fold, stamp, and label and prepare them for a snail mail delivery to all the members. Boy, did we have fun doing that. We always had a ton of laughs. And now people can get the newsletter. It's an email newsletter these days. How did you transition? Well, we found it more feasible and efficient to just email the the newsletter. It saves on postage. It gets delivered immediately. We currently use MailChimp to send our newsletters, which is a program that C.J. Sutherland, who is just brilliant, set the account up and the template. So he did all the hard work behind the scenes. So all I do is plug in all the pictures and links and photo, the photos, links and um, Peter's stuff. And I'm given the freedom to kind of do my own thing and 
send it off to Peter for his blessing before we send it out to everyone. On the note of email, can you recall what is the most exciting email you ever got? Actually, yes, I can. I love it when people share stories about how a specific song has changed their life in a positive way. There have been a lot of touching stories over the years, and I and I love passing those on to Peter. But one in particular that I really can't forget was a man who didn't know Peter, didn't know of his music, and he was unhappy at his job, and he was he was kind of uncertain about his future and what was going to happen. And so he happened to be walking down the street in Nashville and he passed by a church that had an open door. And so he stopped and coincidentally, Peter was inside that church doing a sound check for a show later that evening. So this man stood outside the church and he listened. And then when Peter took a break from sound check and came out probably to the van to get an instrument or take a break, this man approached Peter and talked to him. As I mentioned before, Peter is a really perceptive listener. He took the time to talk to this new friend, and whatever words of wisdom Peter offered, it gave this man the courage to leave his job, which was in a toxic environment, start his own company, which was thriving when he sent the email, and he became engaged to the love of his life. So you just can't make up those, as Peter would say, a true life adventure story. But I thought that was the coolest thing. Wow. That's very, that's really a knockout. Wow. I want to talk about somebody. I've always liked the way this guy thinks. He is a singer songwriter on the Little Flock music label, Scott Kirby. Now, that is an interesting person. What is it like working with Scott Kirby? Yeah, Scott is quite a character, and he's actually one of our favorite frequent house guests. He's up and down the East Coast a lot and and stops here quite a bit. I've done some booking for Scott in the past, but for now I mostly just edit and publish his mumbo-jumbo newsletter, and I update his website. Whenever he has a new project, I also help him with his liner notes and fact-checking, And I order his merchandise. I get his CDs pressed and all that stuff. Let's see. What else can I say about Scott? He's a really good tennis player, and I enjoy hitting with him when he's in town. We hit on my neighborhood courts or we're out on the road. I've probably played tennis with Scott in more states than my USTA partners. So, (laughs) yeah. But, yeah, he's a a pretty talented singer-songwriter, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Very distinctive voice. Yes. How would you describe Scott Kirby, the man himself? Oh, I think he's um, as a oh as a person. He's a funny guy, and I think he tries to keep things light. He's a lighthearted guy. He doesn't take things too seriously. He tries to find humor in everything. There's somebody else that I would like to know about. I'll tell all the listeners out there, there is a very, very talented songwriter, singer, a drummer, and I pursued an interview with him for years. And then finally I had a chance to interview him, and it's one of my one of my favorite interviews with a, a musician. And I'm talking about Roger Guth. Who is the real Roger Guth? Oh my goodness. He's Roger is one of my favorite favorite people. Having the chance to work with him has been really cool. He's a great guy. He has a big heart. I used to be a pen pal with his mom. <laughs> she would call on occasion back when we had the toll-free order line. She would call and order Roger's CDs and I would say, "Mrs. Goose, I'm sure Roger will just send them to you. You don't need to send me a check. But, yeah, he loves to fish, as you know. I think he's one of the favorite co-writers with Peter's music. I think they are like magic when they write together. 
Absolutely. That's a that's a, a true statement if I've ever heard one. Well, I have to thank you, I have to thank Mike Davis, and I have to thank Roger Guth because again, it was such a a treasure to be able to interview him. There's so many albums on the Little Flock Music catalog. There's lots of recordings, live studio recordings. Do you have a favorite album from the Little Flock catalog? Oh boy, Paul, you're putting me on the spot here. <laughs> Gosh, um, it would be hard for me to pick a favorite with Peter Mayer, Scott Kirby, Roger Goose, Brendan Mayer, Peter Mayer Group, Mayer Kirby Mayer, the Mass Acoustics, Eric Darkin, Vince Barvel. They're all so special in their own way. And I really can't imagine the world without their music, but it would be hard for me to pick just one. Well, I'll let you know an interesting little tidbit. Mm -hmm. My favorite album of Peter Mayer, of probably the whole Little Flock catalog, I absolutely love Green Eyed Radio. I think that's mm -hmm. just one of the greatest albums ever made. I know that sounds like an exaggeration, but it's not. It's Green Eyed Radio. And when I was starting the radio show, 16 years ago on Radio Margaritaville, I considered trying to name the show the Green-Eyed Radio Hour. I really thought about that. <laughs> so, Yeah, that's a pretty special one. That's, that's the one that hooked me. And then the next one, Romeo's Garage, came out, and that is such a rocking CD. Oh, yeah. And I remember being at shows selling merchandise, you know, at the – at the merch table and people would come up and they'd say, which is your favorite or which one is best? And, and I would just say, you know, you need to buy them all because they're also great, but <laughs> something interesting. One person came up and was overheard another person asking me, which, which is the best one, which is your favorite? And somebody, and it was a guy said to another person, I think it was a guy said, well, Green Eyed Radio is kind of an album that you would listen to if you wanted to take a bubble bath. <laughs> it's, it's relaxing, and Romeo's Garage is just one if you just want to rock out. So I thought that was kind of fun. Fair enough. Absolutely. <laughs> well, on that note, do you have a favorite song from the Little Flock music? It might be hard, too. Yeah, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. There are so many, gosh, I have lots of favorites, so I can't just pick one. Could you name a few? Um, hmm. Well, let's see, there would be Blue Guitar is one, La Casa Cayueso, because that's Peter, Scott, and Brendan. I love Roger's My Chair. Oh, I love The American by Brendan. Oh, the Mass Acoustics. Okay, so now there's a song they wrote, Tequila Under the Bridge, and they did a video compilation, which everyone should watch on YouTube, because all of the Little Flock musicians, plus more special guests, are in that video. So those are my favorites. Very interesting. This is a question I've been asking lately, and it's gotten some very interesting answers, I think. What is the best way to live life? Hmm. Well, I would say given the times that we're living in right now, I would say love those who are around you, help where you can, give what you can, be grateful, and challenge yourself to live outside of your comfort zone. Hmm. Well spoken. What do you want everyone to remember? Um, about Little Flock? Or... Could be about... anything. Hmm. Oh, I'm stumped on that one. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Who is Terry Letterer? Well, I'm um, a loving wife, a mother, a daughter... A sister, an aunt, a very proud aunt, a cousin, I have great cousins, uh, a friend, and an athlete. 
something that you've stressed again and again in this interview, I've noticed, is the importance of relationships and the importance of family. That has been a reoccurring theme. Yeah. <laughs> it is so important. It really is. Well, I want to invite everyone out there, if they're not familiar with Little Flock Music, it's very easy to go to www.littleflockmusic.com, littleflockmusic.com. Our guest has been Terry Letterer. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for inviting me, Paul. I'm, I'm really, really honored. I'm honored you would talk, absolutely. So thank you so much. Thank you. All right, until next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Paul Leslie Hour. Hosted, written, and produced by Paul Leslie. Intro theme song, Alexander's Ragtime Band, written by Irving Berlin, performed by Dan Barrett. Outro scatting G-Things, improvised, performed, and produced by John Goodwin. Until next time. Goodbye.